What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm updating one of my most popular I guess decks you can say on the channel and that's Yosenju. It's a deck that doesn't get a lot of recognition here on YouTube but post list it can do a lot of really cool things. So in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys a post February 2023 list format Yosenju deck profile and if you guys do enjoy these videos make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. We upload five days a week here on the channel. No we don't we upload 10 days here on the channel. We do five long videos and five shorts every single week so you guys getting a ton of content you guys will always have something to watch and something to look out for so i hope you guys enjoyed today's video and with that let's get right into the deck profile so i'm gonna say this like i say in every single yosenju video i do and these yosenju ratios that i'm gonna be showing you guys are the best yosenju ratios i wouldn't change these up at all so getting into the deck profile here we are playing three yosenju comma one three yosenju comma two as well as three yosenju comma three and then we're playing two to Yosenju Sujik. So this is something that I'm not going to change up at all and I keep saying this in all my Yosenju videos. It's because these are the best ones. These are the ones that do the most for you and these are the ones that are going to be able to continuously create plays for you. Comma 1 is also going to be able to bounce cards on your opponent's side of the field back to the hand and you're going to see there's a lot of synergies with this card and other cards in your deck which is very very powerful. That's why you're playing the comma 1 of course. Comma 2 does some battle damage. Kind of nice. Comma 3 searches for you and Sujik is pretty much an honest. So I like playing these four different names. These are the only four names you're going to want to play and then for other monsters here we're playing three Godarla. now i know you guys are seeing it's like built a little bit weirdly but i just saw i can show it to you guys all side by side the reason we're playing three Godarla here is actually not because of fluanderies anymore barrier statue actually got banned which was really nice but you guys are going to see we're playing certain floodgates stuff like goes in match which locks you into wins which is really powerful because the rest of your deck is all wind monsters so you want to be playing a kaiju that's a win so that you can actually summon it to your side of the field if need be but on top of that the really nice thing about Godarla and any kaiju in general in this deck is because if you go comma one you can bounce that Godarla back to your hand and now you just reset your kaiju after breaking a piece of your opponent's board which is really really powerful so the synergy between the kaijus and the usenjus is really really nice right so that's why i like to play the three Godarla. even though this deck is a going first base deck you still want to be able to have some answers going second especially into today's format because this is post ban list and we are preparing for the cost zero format and this is one of the better cards against the cost zero format really anything that can tribute over your opponent's monsters and just break their kind of boards is really nice and we need to have an answer for them going second so for that reason we're playing the three Godarla. then for the draw power we're playing three pot of extravagance of course as well as two pot of duality i personally like playing three pot of extravagance over pot of prosperity now prosperity is really nice don't get me wrong but a deck like yosenju really needs its card advantage it really needs as many cards in hand as possible especially because you're playing a trap based deck so for that reason i like to play extravagance a little bit over the prosperity and that's again just because you don't really need your extra deck in this deck anyways so extravagance draw Drawing two can be really good, especially if you draw into a hand trap or into a floodgate, right? Which is really, really powerful. Duality, kind of same thing. Duality, you just kind of dig deeper into your deck. And then we're playing three Fire Formation Tanky, of course, because Tanky searches any single Yosenju monster you need in your deck which is really nice and it gives them a 100 attack boost it can come up because the thing is with Yosenju is you're always doing a little bit of poke damage so being able to just do a hundred more poke each time within one to two turns you can easily have enough damage on board to poke your opponent down and win the game right so for that reason I do like the tanky of course and then we are playing a few hand traps here we're playing three ash blossom as well as three curry Kara divine carnate now you guys are seeing some stuff in the side deck over here in the side deck are some other options that I'm going to talk about that you guys can play in the main deck now this deck relatively is pretty budget if you look at the entire deck i'm pretty sure outside of the curry kara nothing here is that expensive maybe the ash and the imperm have a few dollars i think imperm might be five to seven ash might be five to seven as well but ash is also getting another reprint in the trap trick structure deck i think so for that reason ash should be pretty accessible i think curry kara is the most expensive card in the deck now curry kara is a nibiru s card it's a card that kind of works really well against koshter specifically but if you guys don't want to put the budget down for this i'm just gonna give you guys another option Option, you guys can play Nibiru straight up just play Nibiru keep in mind you can just always bounce the card with your comma one so you're never really worried about the token and so for that reason I really think the divine carnate is really good but if you guys don't have the budget for the divine carnate then you guys can play the Nibiru now Nibiru and divine carnate I'm gonna explain why their synergy is actually pretty good in this deck so keep in mind I understand that this deck does play goes and does play rivalry and if you put down a divine carnate or you put down a Nibiru then you're kind of locked out of your usenjus that's fine in a lot of different ways 
because keep in mind all you use senjus is going to be bouncing back to your hand so also if you use your nibiru for example if i'm talking about that card you're never going to be able to nibiru and destroy your own monsters on the board but on top of that these cards aren't always going to stick on the field forever divine incarnate gets to gain a lot of attack points as well so even if you're quote unquote locked out of your Yusenjus with your Gozen match or your rivalry and you're kind of sitting there with the Divine Carnate and our Gozen let's just say let's say this is your board right and this is at 4500 attack that's fine because if your opponent's not going to be able to play around it or beat over it then it doesn't matter you've locked your opponent out and this card is going to be doing the damage for you so keep that in mind there's like multiple win conditions in this deck which is really nice even if you don't have this card on the field then you still have all your Yusenjus to be doing damage with your floodgates right so I hope I explained that I hope it makes sense what I'm trying to say basically what I'm trying to say is even when you quote unquote lock yourself out with these kind of cards you're still doing more damage to your opponent than you are doing to yourself which is really important so again divine carnet is like a nibiru kind of card that's really good at the kashtara but if you guys don't have the curry card then you guys can play the nibiru as well right just a different option for you guys and then we're playing three imperm again three imperm is really good going first because you can set it but it's also really good going second being able to break boards which is really really nice then we're playing the three goes in match the three rivalry i really like these two cards i mean you're locking your opponent out of pretty much anything and your Yosenjus naturally can play with these two cards because you can only control one attribute and you can only control one type your Yusenjus are all wind and they're all beast warrior which is really nice right so that's why i like playing the gozen as well as the rivalry if you can set this up you're pretty much in a really good spot you're in a winning position there and then we are playing three solemn judgment just in case people are playing back row hate and they want to get rid of your back row this could potentially also be solemn strike because solemn strike with these floodgates is also pretty good going second but i just thought solemn judgment was a little bit better because it acts as a defensive card but also as an offensive card as well so that's why i like the three solemn judgment and that's it for the main deck it's a very very consistent main deck i really like this 40 card main deck over here moving on to the extra deck you guys are going to only see we're playing 12 cards the extra deck does not matter in this deck you rarely going into it so the thing is you want to be playing 15 let me let me just say that right it's at 12 here you want to be playing 15 even if it's just random cards because you want extravagant fodder okay so keep that in mind if you want to play something like super poly in the side deck which i'm going to talk about later but if you want to play something like super poly these last three slots can be super poly targets it does not really matter i just want to show you guys what matters i guess quote unquote in this extra deck so lightning chidori is not a bad card because it's a wind of course so you can play under goes in match it's a card that gets rid of back row cards or any set cards really and then we're playing the two tornado dragon i get another wind rank four ixies we're playing the two castell the one digusto emerald these are of course all just wind monsters that essentially can play under goes in match we're playing the one fire fist tiger king this card's not bad either and you can play it under the rivalry which is really nice and the two zeus because we're playing so much ixies monsters and then two of the wind now i will say this with the deck keep in mind i know zeus is also a little bit more on the pricey side if you're considering relative to what the rest of the deck cost but zeus is really good obviously because we're playing all of these ixies monsters and the reason we're playing two is to play around kashita so keep that in mind well, the reason we're playing two of each name is so that we're not getting the one-offs banished and then we're in a stuck position right so again these last three cards that you can put in your extra deck can honestly be anything it doesn't really matter what these are now i want to talk about the side deck just a little bit here because i think these are some pretty cool options that you guys can consider so one option is a utopia double package this is typically an otk package that yosenju plays the only reason i'm not playing it in this build specifically is because you're playing the go first build where you're setting up a bunch of floodgates now if you're playing a kaiju yosenju build where you're mostly focused on going second breaking your opponent's boards then that's a little bit different a situation that i would 100 be playing these but in this build specifically because there's a lot of times where you won't even be able to make this rank four then a lot of the time it's not gonna come up right and then you're just playing a brick for nothing so that's why i decided not to play it but it technically is another option for you i already talked about prosperity and why i like i think extravagance a little bit more than prosperity yes prosperity gets you into one of six cards that you can choose from but i think having more cards in your hand especially in a deck like this one is very important so that's why i chose the extravagance but again prosperity is another good card that you can play in this deck i thought winter cherries and this might be something that you should put in your side deck winter cherries because if you are going second and you go winter cherries against the shangri -La, then your kashtar opponent is going to have a tougher time playing yes they'll still have the kashtar monsters but again this is going to be a little bit more tougher if they don't have access to their shangri -La. and then like i said nibiru is another option for your kurikara and then another thing that i don't have here is super poly if you guys want to play super poly in your side deck you guys can play super poly targets here in your extra deck so just so many different ways and so many different variations of things you guys can do again that's the really cool thing about this deck it's, it's very flexible this main deck i think is really really powerful and then really the extra deck just kind of depends on what you want to play in your side deck if you want to play cherries then you can play your kashtara you could play mirror j which is really good because branded is going to be pretty powerful this format as well so you can play any cherries targets nibiru again for the kurikara if you want to play super poly you can play super poly targets you can even cut some of these cards if you want to play super poly and the cherries like there's just so many different things you guys can do keep in mind this extra deck and the side deck here just build it how you feel especially if you're going to your locals how you feel like that's going to be the most appropriate but for the main deck i really think this 40 card main deck is very powerful for this build so post ban 
honest, I think this deck is very underrated. I think it can do a lot of cool things, and I think you guys should try it out for yourselves. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That's my take on going first Yosenju in today's format. If you guys want to see a Yosenju Kaiju build, let me know in the comment section down below because then we'll make that happen. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you guys did, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. We upload five days, 10 days. We upload 10 days a week here on the channel. Five long videos, five shorts. You'll always have content. I hope you guys enjoy it all. I really appreciate every single one of you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you guys all for watching. And with that, Spanko signing out. Peace.